Luke chapter 1. I get my notes here. Luke chapter 1, verse 34. The audios and videos of the previous messages and teachings from Luke 1 to 33 can be found on the YouTube and uh, other places of the links that you found this one. I said verse 34. Then Mary, then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Look at that. Mary's engaged to Joseph and there's been no sexual conduct. She is still a virgin at a young age. She's pure. She's right. And this is a verse about the virgin birth. How can I be pregnant when I have not known a man? The angel just told her, verse 31, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. Verse 34, Mary said, How shall this be? There is a set time for me and Joseph to be married, to come together as husband and wife. And it may not have been to a little while. I don't think it was in the near future, because she was like, okay, you know, when Joseph and I get married, and then, you know, we'll have the intercourse, and I'll produce a baby. That's not the case. In, one, in chapter 1, verse 18, Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. Now he also was told that his wife, who's barren, and they're both old, they're going to have a son. Mary is told they're going to have a son. What happened to Zacharias and Elizabeth is the foundation again of the Jewish foundation of who they are. Abraham and Sarah, a hundred year old man, a ninety year old woman had a baby named Isaac. Mary, you're going to have a son. I, I haven't been with any man. The angel's going to step ahead, he's going to tell her it's going to be done without a man. Mary cannot go back from Genesis to Malachi. There's no gospel written. Christ hasn't even been born yet. He hasn't even been conceived yet. Next verse he will be. She can't go back in the Old Testament and say, okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Which child, oh, come on, come on, help me, concorn. Oh, I need a concorn. Which child has never had a father? None. All Mary can do is run to Isaiah, I believe, seven fourteen. I forget what the reference there. And I'm saying a virgin shall. That's her. That is the only place that she can run to. But it had not happened. And what the what the thing we need to see when we look at Zacharias, it happened. He became done, dumb by not believing. Mary's going to believe in something that has never happened. And she's going to turn to the angel of the Lord and say, Okay. Zacharias, this angel, which we know in both cases as Gabriel, shows up in a place where no man can be. He doesn't have wings. He doesn't have feathers. He's just a man. And Zacharias the Levite says, I don't believe you. Mary, we're not told where her and the angel shows up. The angel by the Old Testament are just plain men. He shows up to her. A plain man shows up to her. No halo. No light. You're going to have a baby. Really, but I don't know. I've been with a man... But I believe you. I got to ask you a question. Who was the greatest 
in Luke chapter 1 in the eyes of the Lord. A priest or a, a woman of, of David who is humble enough to believe what the angel said. Don't you think that these two people made an impression on the angel? You are supposed, you are the class of people on this earth that God has chosen you with the word and with the temple service, and you don't believe me? And he imagine he's sitting there talking to this woman. He's like, "Here we go again. She's not going to believe me. I'm going to, I'm going to have to make her dumb or something." No, oh, these stupid human beings that God made. And he's like. And she says in verse 34, How shall I know this? Or How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And an angel answered and said unto her, There is no rebuke. He is moving on. Okay, she's asked a legitimate question. And the angel is going to answer that question. Zachariah should, you know, be scratching his head and, oh boy, that sounds familiar. Can you help me here, angel? Can you help me, Mr. Gabriel? What do you want to help with? This sounds so familiar. Okay, uh, what is the five thousand five hundred dollars? What is the 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 the, the foundation of, of Judaism? Abraham. Yeah, the more, come on. Isaac, yeah, come on, a little more. And then we'll come to him. Is that right? How's this going to happen? Shot his mouth off too much. Mary asked a legitimate question about her state. Listen, I haven't been with a man. The angel answered and said, And the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing. Does it say in Proverbs. Uh, if thou hast found a wife. Thou hast found a good thing. And favor the Lord. Don't be offended that God called you woman. Wife. Dear. Don't be offended he called you a thing. He called Jesus Christ a thing. Right there. The embryo that is will be Jesus Christ, God called the thing. He's got a message from the God from God. I don't think Gabriel's gonna step outside of God's word. Which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now this vote this verse is loaded. Now notice, she is not the mother of God. He shall be called the Son of God. Mary was an excellent young lady, but she would not have to be called anything more than what she was. Okay? We'll give her credit where credit's due, but we're not going to make her a God. Yes. The subject is the Holy Ghost. That's the subject. The word is by an angel. There is no sperm involved, but power. Power of God. So what do you have in all these video games? You gotta get power. You got a power up. You got a power bar. You got to eat a power candy bar. You got to whack someone to get more power. The birth, or excuse me, the, the conception of Jesus Christ in Mary's womb was done by power. Now, if you want power, get away from the garbage cans of the, of the video games and. And, and television and cartoons and all that. Get with the power of God. 
Think about if God can make a woman pregnant without man, you think what the power he can do in your life with little troubles that you have. And it comes down to the same basic thing that Mary has that we can have when it comes to the power of God. Faith. Jesus said, if you had as little as faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be gone, and it will. This tree should be uprooted and be planted in the middle. That is the same power of faith that's given to us in the troubles and the in the in the life things that we have in our life. Like Mary. She's going to, to carry the Jesus Christ, the Son of God. She has faith and the power has been given to her by her faith from God. God is so powerful, he can do what man cannot. Even the test tube, the sperm and the egg are needed. And of all mankind, to the last Federation of a female egg, you will need sperm. This is the one and only time the power of God that man was not needed. Jesus Christ was of God and no man. Jesus Christ was not man made. You got to get that. That is the foundation of your belief in salvation in God, the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to believe that he was 100% man and 100% God. You have to. That is a must. You ask a Jehovah Witness if they're saved. And if they say yes, and then you turn around and ask them if God is Jesus and Jesus is God, and they say no, they're not saved in the eyes of God. Now, to overshadow is to throw a shadow over the shelter. And you find this in Acts 5.15. And Exodus 33, 18 to 23. Now this is not God's and humans intercoursing. As you would find in the Roman, Greek, and Babylonian mythology. You will find in them gods of those Romans, Greeks, and Babylonians. You will find the gods would come down and mate with the humans. And the humans would mate with the gods. You find that in Genesis at the time that God calls Noah, the angels were coming down. This is not a sex orgy of, a, of God and Mary. This was done by power. Get that. Know it. The holy thing. The sanctified, setting apart thing. is Jesus Christ as a fetus. A noun is a person, place, or thing. It is Jesus in the womb as a thing. The birth is going to be labor for nine months. Mary don't get special time for carrying Jesus in her womb. It's going to be a nine-month period. Start the clock now in verse 35. She is now carrying a child in her womb. Get the clock ticking. So from verse 36, chapter 1, verse 36, until chapter 2, verse 7, is nine months. Verse 36. 
and behold thy cousin Elizabeth. All right, Elizabeth, who we who we learned about in chapter one, the wife of Zacharias, and Mary, they are cousins. One is of Levi, and one is of Judah of David. There was a cross marrying there of the tribes, which was forbidden. Somewhere in the line of Mary's family, because it says, chapter 1, verse four or 5, his wife of the daughters of Aaron. And their cousins, there may be a possibility that there's the line of Levi in Mary. Now, I don't know. I don't understand the, the family relationship with cousins. I, I know brothers and sisters and mother and father and grandparents. When you get outside of that, cousins and nephews, and I, I don't know. I'll throw that out there. If you know about uh, the relations of family and all that and blood and could it be possible, there's a possibility there. She has also conceived a son and in her old age. Elizabeth chapter 1 was told she was going to have a baby. In verse 36, the clock has already begun. Elizabeth is now pregnant. Is that a word, pregnant? The clock for Elizabeth has already begun. It says, Behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived, past tense, a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month. John the Baptist is six months older than Jesus. And if Mary and Elizabeth were cousins, I think John the Baptist and Jesus were cousins or something like that. I don't understand the family list. They're related. It's the same family. Somehow. With her, who was called barren? Now you look at verse 25. Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked upon me to take away my reproach among men. What is reproach? You ain't got no baby. Now let me ask you all a question. Where do you find that in the baby? In the baby, where do you find that in the Bible? That story, Hannah, right? Don't you see Zacharias who saw it? We're told by the revelation to Mary by Gabriel about a woman that we weren't told about before. That hey, she also had the life of Hannah. Hey, you ain't got no child, and I got my children. Put her to tears. See what a little more Bible reading will do for you? When you read the whole Bible and nothing but the Bible? Someone asked me the other day, Time Life, now we've got, we, we got in the, in the rack at the store. Uh, not Time Life, uh, one of them stupid magazines, Jesus. This says Jesus on it. You know, now you got the, the fall of Roman Empire. But that, he has, what do you think about that book that says Jesus? That's just full of crap. He looked at me like, I said, you need the Bible. That's what you need. I said, you got to read the whole Bible to understand Jesus. And it's not going to be in 65 or 70, whatever it is. And my Bible will probably costs cheaper than what that book will cost. Or magazine. It wasn't even a book. And I know that's probably got a version of the Catholic Jesus. And probably raises Mary up more than who she should be raised up. Get Jesus out of the Bible and not out of any book. 
He's in the King James Bible from Genesis to Revelation. That's where you need to find Jesus. Okay, so. Mary and Elizabeth were cousins. Jesus and John are put blood relatives. Elizabeth was of Aaron, the Levi, chapter 1, verse 5. Mary is of Judah, chapter 3, verse 33. John the Baptist is six months older than Jesus. Baron is to recap the Jewish history of Isaac and John the Baptist, miracle pregnancy, and the senior citizen of parenthood. Verse 37. For with God nothing shall be made impossible. The pregnancies of Sarah, Rachel, Hannah, and the virgin birth. The impossibility, Psalms 89, 35, Revelation 2, 27, 1 Samuel 15, 29, Numbers 23, 19, where, where we get to God, he's not a liar, he cannot lie, Hebrews 6, 18, Titus 1, 2, and Isaiah 65, 16. The subject is the pregnancy, Genesis 18, 14. And the contents is vital of Genesis eighteen fourteen and Luke one thirty seven. Isaac and Jesus are types. Genesis eighteen fourteen, Psalms one fifteen verse three, Jeremiah thirty two seventeen, and Matthew three nine. Now one thirty eight. One thirty eight. And Mary arose in those days. Wait, a I'm reading wrong. And Mary said, "Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Be unto me according to thy word." And the angel departed from her. She believed. She did not cast no doubt and didn't say, "How can this be?" She submits to God without doubt and without rebellion. How's that? Now let's look at this handmaid tonight. And we'll begin in Luke 16 1. I mean, excuse me, Genesis 16 1. Genesis 16 1. I'm going to say something here. And you don't have to believe it. But didn't we read in Luke one thirty eight what Mary said? I'm a handmaid of the Lord. Let's run to Genesis sixteen one, and we find something very particular. And Sarai, Abraham's wife, who's the foundation of Jewish race? There they are, right there. Sarah and Abraham. Sarai, Abraham's wife, bare him a, bare him no child. And she had a handmaid and an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. The first place a handmaid shows up in the, in the Bible shows up in Hagar. Could it be quite possible that Mary was thinking back to the days of Abraham and, and Sarah and thinking a handmaid? I'll leave it to you in prayer in the Lord. Well, let's run to another place where we find this word that Mary uses handmade. Ruth 3 9. Ruth 3 9. If I can find it here among my notes. And he said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth, thy handmaid. Isn't that what Mary said? I'm going to assume that Mary is not a good Roman Catholic. I'm going to assume that Mary knew the scriptures. And that Mary, the kind of girl that she was, 
If, if a priest would come up to her and give her the crap that they give to the people today, she'd take that collar and wring his neck with it. Because Mary will give a commandment in Luke later. What he tells you to do, talking about her son, do it. Let's look further. 1 Samuel 1 11. But doesn't that tell you something? 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11. This is Hannah. Now you answered the question. Before I knew I was going to give you this scripture, didn't you? You had no idea I was going to give you 1 Samuel 1. And she vowed the vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look, look on the affliction of thy handmaid, and remember me, and not forget me, and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man child. Doesn't that sound like Mary? She has just been told she's going to have a son. The son of God. And she runs back to Hagar, Sarah, and Abraham. She runs to Ruth, who is the grandmother, the grandmother, the grandmother, the grandmother of David. And now she runs to Hannah, who was oppressed like her cousin. Mary runs into a lot of, I mean, she could use all kinds. I, I, I'm thy servant. We'll look at that in a minute. Look at verse 16, same chapter, 1 Samuel 1. Count not thy handmaid for a daughter of Belial. That, that's a wicked. Only a wicked woman would say, I'm more in control of my son. And if you want your prayers answered, you come to me. That's a wicked woman. That was not Mary. First Samuel eighteen one. No, excuse me. First Samuel twenty five thirty four. First Samuel twenty five thirty four. First Samuel twenty five thirty four. For very deed as the Lord God of Israel liveth, which hath kept me back from hurting thee. Except that uh, I got the wrong reference. Twenty-five, thirty-four. Except that uh, his hasten comes to meet me. Surely there have been not. There's somewhere here that Abigail says, "I'm not handmade." Forty-one. 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 And she arose and bowed herself on her face to the earth and said, "Behold, let thy handmaid be as a as a servant." To wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. Let me make that little correction now. I got 34 instead of 44. Okay, correct me there. Alright. A handmaid, you're not going to like this, is a female servant. A servant is Latin. And the Latin is to keep or hold. Property one that wants. That is, stops, holds, attends, or one that is bound. In the 1828 dictionary, number one, a person, male or female, that attends another for the purpose of performing a menial. Menial? I, I mean, carrying a baby? Office for him, a mother. Who is employed by another for such offices or for other labor? <laughs> yeah, okay. And it is subject to his command. A servant differs from slave, as the servant's subjection to a master is voluntary. Uh, the slave is not. Mary had a free will. You thought I was going to say Mary had a little lamb. Mary at any point could have told the angel, no, not me, sorry. i got a life to live. And if you interrupt my life, I'll just have that fetus aborted and I'll go on living the way I want to live. Mm -hmm. 
God did not force her. And I can assume maybe that Mary had the worst pregnancy full term. I mean, from conception to birth, the worst that any mother could have had. Why? Satan would be out to try to kill her. That long donkey ride. Now, come on. If you ever been pregnant, wouldn't you really enjoy being on a donkey for many hours, if not days? You just really want to do that. Every slave is a servant, but every servant is not a slave. That was in Webster's 1812 Dictionary. I thought that was interesting to read. Back to uh, Luke chapter 1 verse 39. So this is a free will when she says, 38, uh, 38, and Mary said, Behold the handmaid. I'm doing this of free will. I will do it, Lord. It's quite interesting because look at verse 18. Zachariah said unto the angel, after the angel explained it, Where shall, where, whereby shall I know this? You know, he gives an excuse. Mary's response is, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And she's able to talk. She's able to speak. Zacharias is still dumb. It's not interesting. 39. And Mary rose in those days and went into the hill country with haste unto a city of Judah. Now, I'm going to put my own little valuation here, and you can throw it in a garbage can, and you don't have to believe it, but I'm assuming here that this thing here is to be completely void of men to ensure the virgin birth. You know, later on, they'll say to Jesus in John chapter 8, I think it is, we at least we'd be not born of fornication like you were. I think at this point right here, Mary goes off and bees by herself, and she's going to show up at, at Elizabeth's house to say, "Hey, nine months ago, I have proof by my cousin Elizabeth, I have not been with a man at all." Out of the mouth of two, who would be the two? Elizabeth and Zacharias, a priest and the priest's wife. For all the mouth of two or three, the Old Testament law says, so establish the witness. Book. She couldn't have been with Joseph during this time. Because they could have said Joseph lied and, you know, they had a little hanky-panky. She runs off to the priest as a testimony. Now, we be not born of fornication like you were, Jesus. If Zacharias is still alive, why did they call him to the table? Zacharias, it was courted nine months before Jesus Christ was born that Mary was with your, with your wife. Is that true? Yes, she was. Was there any man that came in her presence? No. Well, how can this be? The Holy Ghost. <laughs> See what I mean? Mary did what the Bible told her to do. Go get two witnesses during this time so no one can say that you had fornication. You've got family witness. You've got two people who witness. You've got a priest who gives your son a hard time as a witness to your purity and virginity. If that's a word. You can't say Mary. Had fornication. Call Zacharias to the court. Now he may have been dead. We don't know how old he was, and we don't know at what point he was. How old when the when the when the priests and all that give him a hard time? But they had to know him. They're all the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the, and the scribes all together.
Verse 40. Verse 40. And entered into the house of Zacharias. There we go. And saluted Elizabeth. And let me show him go there, you know, just with her up there. You know, just, how you doing, cousin? Cousin, how you doing? Now, don't you know that they both got good news? And don't you know that they have news for the National Enquirer at the supermarket? Old ugly woman has a baby. A woman has never had sex have a baby and living in the same house. Elvis and Adolf Hitler will join her for dinner. I mean, no. What's going on here? Two impossibility pregnancies are in the, under the same roof. Grandma Elizabeth and Purity Mary are both filled with a baby in their womb by God. And Zacharias is in the corner over there. Can't say a word. He can't say, Mary, how did you know? He's only got to listen. And can you imagine Mary's telling Elizabeth the story? You know, I had this angel come up to me. Oh, what's his name? Gabriel. Gabriel. Can you imagine Zachariah's eyes flirting up? Well, how come she's talking? Don't tell me that Gabriel was not mentioned in that house that afternoon. You know women how they love to talk. You know how they used to love to tell stories. And there is Zacharias sitting there because it's not his time to be at the, at the temple. You know God may be there to hear the whole thing. How come this little maiden woman who's pure had more sense to believe me, God, than you who are a priest? Essentially the same angel. And they didn't gather they didn't gather feathers, they gathered the word of God. Her life without a man <coughs> excuse me would be witnessed by two Elizabeth and Zachariah. <coughs> well, we're gonna leave you right there. We're gonna stop right there. We're gonna leave you these two, the three of them are together. Zacharias, Elizabeth, Mary, six-month-old John the Baptist, and newly conceived Jesus Christ. What a place to leave you. And this is the first time that John and Jesus come together, and you're going to find something that's going to happen interestingly. And they don't see each other until Jesus gets baptized. This is the first and only last time that these two, John the Baptist and Jesus, are together. And they're in each other, they're in their own wombs. And they can't see each other. Because you're going to find out later on, you need to get this point, is John's going to say, listen, I, I don't know who he is. I haven't seen him. Until that dove came down. And the voice from heaven. And if you think if life is not life in the moon, what do you pick up next week? And what we pick up next week is you better be careful what you do, woman. If you are pregnant, and what that baby can pick up inside your womb. But we'll leave it just like that. We're going to leave with the four people. Five people. John the Baptist, Jesus Christ, Mary, Elizabeth, and Zacharias are in the same room. And we're going to let Mary and Elizabeth talk about Mary's story of what happened and Elizabeth what her husband has written to her has happened 
And every time they mention the name Gabriel, you know Zachariah is going to lift up his eyes like, oh, did I blow it? Because you know what? Had he believed the angel, can you picture these three adults sitting at the table talking about their stories? Can you just think about what Zacharias would love to speak to Mary if he could talk to him? Did he have blue eyes? Yeah, that, yeah, that was him. I don't know if he had blue eyes. I'm just saying. I mean, the majesty of his voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was right there in the temple where it happened. I was taking care of the incense, and there he was. Where did you see him, Mary? But he can't. He can't talk. He's got to write it all out. He's the first person who's got to text Mary and Elizabeth. <laughs> can't write it. Can't talk. Text it. He's sitting there with, a, with his phone and no batteries because they haven't been made yet. He's got a text because he wouldn't believe the angel. And we'll leave it right there. Leave it on that note. Texting Zachariah. No. Um.